Right, what we're going to do now is something very exciting. Very, very exciting. And I'd like a young child under the age of 10 to come and help me. And uh, there is a prize involved. Okay, so, um, whose hand was up first? Okay, here we go. I've forgotten your name, I'm so sorry. Lenny, brilliant. This is Lenny, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Lenny, um, you've probably come on the wrong week because next week, Dan is speaking and uh, he's offering a free BMW for those who've come. <laughs> But I'm sorry, but uh, this week it's just a book and a DVD, but it's going to be a good book. All right, so this is just our way of just bringing in new people, BMWs, bikes, you know. We're going to see revival in no time. So, um, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get into groups, and I'm going to ask you to uh, grapple with this question. The question is this, what wonder of the natural world fascinates or excites you the most? And what I have done there is put a list of inspiration in case you are just so tired and you've just come with no ideas at all. But I'd like you to get into groups and I'd like to say, what wonder of the natural world fascinates or excites you the most? You know, when this part comes onto planet Earth with Attenborough, this is the thing that animates you and brings you alive and excited. So can you read that? So you've got mountains, birds, oceans, insects. You've you got the idea. So, are you ready? So get into groups, you've got two minutes, and then Lenny is going to decide which one of these is the most extraordinary, most interesting idea. So do you want to go and find a group? Here we go. So Lenny, here's a microphone. And I'd like you to, okay, hands up. What have you heard that's really been interesting? Something that you've heard, not something that you've told yourself. So you just find the people with hands up and then just go and put the microphone in front of them. We'll get some feedback. Go, 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 go. Some at the back. Okay, put your hands up, everybody. What have you heard? Come on, everybody. There's a few hands there. Here we go. Okay, we were talking about space, black holes. So I learned this week that the most studied black hole that we have is only 27 miles across, but it's got the mass of seven suns. Oh, I love you. But <laughs> I also learned the biggest one they found is a million times wider than the solar system. Oh, I love you even more. This is, this is so good. I love it. Come on. Oh, should we just go home now? I think we're done. Let's just give a final blessing. Okay, here we go. Um, I learned about that the animals, that tigers are going very extinct at the moment because people are trying to take their blood and put it into, like, medication and stuff. Yeah. In the here we go. That is such an important issue. And uh, we need to be keeping a whole diversity of wildlife because everything is so interconnected, isn't it? You are brilliant. Okay, other hands. Let's go. Go on, Lenny. Run, run, run. I heard about a woman who loved knitting, but she lost both of her arms, and so she learnt to knit with her feet, and she creates all sorts of different things. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Here we go. That's fantastic. Great. Let's fire. Good running, Lenny. Arctic animals. Arctic animals. We love Arctic animals, don't we? Is there one especially? Polar bears? Yeah, here we go. Right, others. This is so good. Well done, Lenny. Um, um, the midnight zone is full of animals, uh, but um, the, the people can't survive without light, so it's amazing that animals can survive without the light. That deserves a round of applause right there. You are amazing. Fantastic. Okay, here we go, another one. I read this week that a doctor, American doctor, uh, Candice Pert, discovered that every cell has got emotion. You are kidding me. Every cell has got emotion. Well, something I was going to say later on, there's about 36 trillion cells in each of our bodies. 
Every single one of those is crying. <laughs> wow, that's quite something. Here we go. Right, a few more. Let's go. Uh, David's worked in farming all his life, and we were just talking about how amazing that a tiny seed grows into a very complex plant. I love that. I love that. Duncan and Maxine, we love you. Farmers, Danny Bortry, farmer, here we go, we love you. Okay. Mine, mine, mine's very simple. I just get fascinated by ants. Um, ants, yeah. here we go. I love you. Yeah, you are so good. Can I ask what it is about ants that really fascinates you? Go, Lenny. Just that they're so hard-working and, and they don't, anything, you stop them, really. You can put something in their way and they get round it. There we go. All right, one more. Let's have one more, Lenny. Can you find one? Here we go. I never, ever tire of seeing a rainbow. Beautiful. <laughs> there we go. So, Lenny, there's some epic ones there. I mean, obviously, I have my favourite, but um, which, which one do you think really was a standout? Which one do you reckon? Uh, which one do you, was really inspiring? What do you reckon? Should we go for Duncan? Because he really, come on. <laughs> he was just incredible. Should, should we go for that one there? Because I, should we go for that one? Yeah, you agree? Okay, hold on, hold on. Now, would you prefer a book or a DVD? Take your time. <laughs> okay, DVD. You so again, go and give that to Duncan. So this is a life story. Many lives, one epic journey. We're talking about adventure today. So there you go. That's on, um, that's on me. I didn't want it anymore. And this, Lenny, is for you, the DVD of that series from the one and only Attenborough. All right, give her a round of applause. So good. So the more that we engage in all these things, the deeper the dives of exploration and experience with the world around us. The more understanding, the more we love these things, the more that we understand and love the creator who holds all things together. Adventurously, what does this word mean? It means this. It's someone who is willing to take risks and try out or pursue new methods, ideas, or experiences. Is that photograph up? I sent this to Andy. When I took it, I was on a walk back from a meeting in London, and I just randomly walked over the bridge in Tunbridge and just got my phone out, took this photograph, and then got home and go, oh my goodness, that's probably one of the greatest photographs I've ever taken. <laughs> of Gilbert House, for crying out loud. So Andy kindly paid me 10 grand for the rights, and uh, no, I was on Joe. But in all seriousness, that when I've thought about it, this word adventurously, we've got people like Andy in our community who, and Janet, who just went for the regeneration of a whole area that was really just dead. And they took on this building, and now you've got the most thriving community, regeneration. And um, so when I think about ex adventurous, people who are adventurously expectant, I think about Andy and Janet, who brought life on so many different levels through the formation of Tunbridge Counseling Services and uh, what is now just a thriving community in the cafe. But here we go, an unusual or daring experience, someone who's willing to take risks and try out or pursue new methods, ideas, or experiences. Faith is never static, because in nature and in the Bible, and then the life of Christ, there is always, always more to explore. There is infinite depth. And for us to be adventurers in finding out the more, the more, the more. I want to ask a, a, a big question. What does it say about a creator, the most things that have ever been designed 
and made will never be seen or appreciated by humanity. Have you ever thought about that? Most things that have ever been designed or made will never be seen or appreciated. So what is that a photograph of? Sand. Have you ever been on a beach and thought, this is what I'm walking on? Sand under magnification, and you realize that every grain of sand is individually designed and innovated. Every single grain of sand. And we just walk over it without even thinking about it. A question I've thought about is, is eternity the time that we get to explore the 99% that we haven't found yet? Will we have the eyes to see the grains of sand? Will we have the eyes to see the molecular and the cellular? The wild flowers in the most random of places? How exciting is that thought? Obviously, I'll spend most of my time in the New Birmingham, the New Jerusalem. But most of the people will spend time in Iceland. And like, what does that look like? New heaven and new earth. Eternal adventurers with no suffering or borders or barbed wire to keep people out. Or wars or famines or disease or climate change or the need of moisturizer. Come on, I thought that was funny. <laughs> I'm putting so much effort into this. Give me something, even if you don't find it funny. No, I wasn't joking. There is so much more going on that we could ever, ever imagine. And we have been given the most extraordinary and complex and unique brains to comprehend and experience the world in a million ways. Scientists estimate that we have about a quadrillion connections in each of our brains. A quadrillion, that's 16 zeros. A quadrillion connections in each of our brains. Alu, 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 yeah. Don't you find that extraordinary? You haven't sung that song for probably 20 years. And within one second, you know the next line. Where's that come from? We'll meet again. Keep going. Don't you find that quite extraordinary? Do you know the words to that song with no projection? A quadrillion connections in each of our brains to comprehend. Music is extraordinary. There are just 12 notes on the scale. Du, 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 du. From these 12 notes have come 1,500 genres of music and subgenres and subgenres of that and 3.5 billion songs and unique symphonies and concertos, all from. Du, 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 du. You ever thought about that? If you studied music every day for a thousand years, you would only just touch the surface. It's infinite, it's oceanic. And the more people on planet Earth, the more songs that are written, the flow of creativity. You see the way that Matthew Bawtree sings his songs amongst us, the way he engages with music, with his amazing neurological setup. He is the passionate worshipper in the church, isn't he? And we love Matthew for the inspiration and the way that he engages with music. Yes, we love you, Matthew. Could we see music as a creative flow, an expression of a generous God who doesn't just bless us with smooth jazz and soft rock, but gives us 1,500 genres of music and 3.5 billions of songs to sing. How great is the Lord, who is vast and also involved in the small and in the hidden. Ants. I, I, I just mesmerized by ants. I was on holiday and I did an experiment and because there was just a few ants around me and I thought, right, I'm just going to put a few crumbs down and just time how long it would take for ants to clear away all the crumbs. Bearing in mind, hardly any ants. Bread that doesn't smell of anything, I think. 23 minutes. Before you know it, 
ants are coming from nowhere. And you're like, what is going on? Then they are working cooperatively as a team. How the heck are they doing that? Cooperatively as a team in lifting these crumbs of bread that are like about 20 times the, you know, the size of this ant. And then they're transporting it out 23 minutes and the whole lot was clear. <laughs> How does that work? How do they know that it was there? Ants. You know, Jesus talks about the birds of the air. You know, how much I care for the birds of the air. We're talking about ants. Scientists, again, using the word quadrillion, the quadrillion ant, have this incredible role to aerate the soil, coming back to the farmers. The role of ants to aerate the soil alongside worms. Everything having its role. Everything in the small and in the vast being an extraordinary. So the more we know and understand the love creation, the more we know and understand the creator. Is that right? So we become adventurers. I heard this week, has anybody listened to the podcast? It's a brilliant podcast. It's called the podcast. And um, this week it was from the Millennium Seed Bank at Wakehurst. Has anybody ever been there? Just the most amazing place. And uh, they have a collection of 2.4 billion seeds from around the world, banking them to preserve them for the future because we rec recognize that there's going to be so much loss because of climate change. So here in Wakehurst, in the vaults underneath, are 2.4 billion seeds. Have a think about that. 2.4 billion different varieties of plants. Two point four billion seeds, quadrillion ants, quadrillion brain connections. In the last twenty years we've realized that trees communicate to one another through billions of mycausal networks underneath forests. Since the new James Webb telescope went up, we now know that there's around two trillion galaxies, and our galaxy alone is six hundred trillion miles across. There are two trillion of those. We have trillions of individually designed grains of sand. With eight billion people, we have three billion songs recorded so far and counting. And most of us in this room will be containing around 37.2 trillion cells, each containing 2.14 meters of DNA. This gives a total DNA length of 79 billion, 608 million kilometers of DNA that's in each of your body that makes up you and me. Come on. How great is our God. Here we Do you get a sense as to the scale, the extravagance, the creativity, the design, the innovation, the generosity, the flow, the potential, the wonder? This quote came from Ian McKilchrist, who's written just epic, epic books. He's a scientist. I don't think he's a Christian. But this quote, if you could um, bring it up. No, no, no. The, uh, uh, the Ian McKilchrist one. This is a photograph I took from EasyJet flight. Um, <laughs> there, is n there is nothing to push us into a belief that the cosmos is a random heap of fragments that have no meaning, purpose, complexity, beauty, and no order. Rather, there is an order for us to see if we could just open our eyes a cosmos that is beautiful, complex, responsive, and richer than the one that we have been taught to live in. He is a psychiatrist, literary scholar, philosopher, and neuroscientist. On a Tuesday, he delivers post for the Royal Mail. <laughs> but John, in his gospel, gives you an insight into this infinite life of Christ. In John 21, 25, he says this, Jesus did many other things as well. 
if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have the room for the books that would be written. John, even then, capturing something of the billions and the trillions and the macro. So what is it for us to be living adventurously with the antennas up, open, curious, expansive? What does the Lord want to reveal to me today through what I hear on Radio 4? We always think about, well, I just need to listen to Premier Radio if I'm going to get some spiritual input. No! Premier Radio is great, but Radio 4 is, oh my life, one of the richest, most extraordinary, most nourishing places of insight and information. What is it to invest a time in a TED talk or spending time on Google Earth or listening to a piece of music or slowing down a bit and noticing the weeds in the crack of the concrete? All things are within the interiority of God. That's a good line, isn't it? I heard that one last week, and it just blew me away. So what is it for us to be living adventurously, with the antennas up, open, curious, expansive, also with our, in our walk with Christ, in our pursuit, in our adv- adventure with the divine dance? To be adventurously expectant. What's next, Papa? Do you mind if we go five minutes over time and go to 10-2? Is that all right? What does it, for, 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 for me, I um, went to a conference and I heard somebody speak. He was talking about the reimagination of philanthropy. Really compelling, extraordinary. And there's just something in me, just adventurously expectant, you know, that kind of, Lord, what do you want to do? Don't quite know what I'm doing in the space, but here we go. And just sense I should just approach him and go, have you got anybody supporting you in your role and your position? Just incredible philanthropists who's doing amazing things around the world. And he said, no. I was like, right, okay. And I said, would you like to come and walk the fields of Kent with me? And I'd never met this guy in my life. And he said, yes, okay. And so we walked the fields of Kent around Shibbon Common, first photograph. And um, we've probably done about 30 walks since then. And he keeps coming down out of the city. And it's been an incredible spiritual journey for him as well because nature just speaks very loudly after a little while. And it provokes good questions. I was on a flight to a meeting in the south of France. And I sat next to this guy. And uh, I said, so, and there were some delays, which meant we were still on the tarmac, you know, an hour after supposed to take off. So I turned to him and said, so what are you doing in the south of France? He goes, well, my my boss is this billionaire and uh, I'm his accountant. And I'm just going down to talk to him about his money. And I'm like, rock and roll, we're sitting next to the good person. Charitable kind of, you know, words coming into my mind. And, um, and he said, what do you do? Which is the worst question anybody can ever ask me. <laughs> and um, I said, well, I'm involved in quite a lot of charities. And went on to a bit of detail. And he said, that's really interesting. Last week I was having a conversation with my wife. And my wife is like this award-winning accountant in the city. And we had this conversation that we have... We earn so much money between us, and we don't give any money to charity. And we had that conversation last week. And I said, would you like me to set up a meeting in London with Ed, this person who's head of philanthropy? And so two weeks later, here we are in this pub in Fulham, and I'm really excited because I'm thinking, we're going to get a top meal. (laughs) And and we come together, and... um, this most amazing synergy that happens between this couple and this Ed. She then sits on the board of his charity. They start being generous. And then I walk away and all I've had is a pint of beer. (laughs) And I'm like, God, you know, I bring these people together. I facilitate 
I do the hard work and I don't even get a meal. <laughs> what is going on? And I literally walked down Fulham Broadway and I was a re- quite spiritually grumpy, <laughs> going, God, come on. I'm not exaggerating. In this moment at 8.30 at night, Steve, this call from the other side of the road from Bro- Fulham Broadway, Steve, I can't believe it. Have you met my new partner? We're just going out for a meal. Would you come and join us? <laughs> Here we go, straight into this most amazing kind of time with this couple that was just so important at that time for all of us. This adventurously expectant, always having the antennas up. Lord, how do you want to lead? How do you want to guide? How do you want to direct? What's going on? Been really finely tuned as to this word adventurously. The nature and depth of Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit is infinite. And they, in their wonder, come right into the heart of complexity and chaos and beauty and order and continually and creatively bring new life and comfort and grace and peace and wisdom and insight and purpose and revelation and understanding. Jesus comes in every way every day to us and says, follow me, remain in me, stay close to me. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant. Greeting God with a child like, what's next, Papa? I finish with these words. This is a photograph I took crossing London Bridge to a meeting. But these words, they just challenge me. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wilder seas, where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. Prayer ministry is going to be available. If you'd love just somebody to pray with, Lord, where things maybe have just become a bit dull and stagnant and a bit narrow, just we appreciate prayer just for that more expansive kind of sense of our relationship with the Lord. There's people who would love to pray for you. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Creating us a pure heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within us. Lord, I pray that you would expand our hearts and minds to know that you are with us in every context, in every situation. Thank you, Lord.